to what they personally had stored. These paper notes could then be easily exchanged back into Electrum. The advantages to paper was it was very easy to transport due to it being light. Foreign trade became even easier now that you could give specific denominations of what you wanted to exchange. When Marco Polo visited China, he brought the idea of paper money back to Europe with him, where at the time the Italian florin, which was a type of coin, was universally accepted. Unfortunately, these papers could also be easily counterfeited. While these notes were supposed to be a representation of the money being stored, these institutions frequently issued more notes than they had gold and silver, which ultimately hurt the public's confidence in these institutions. These private institutions also gave rise to the use of banks controlled by governments, such as the Federal Reserve, which acted similarly during the gold standard system, which will be talked about shortly. Paper money would not see popularity in the West until about the 1600s, when the bank institutions were created to store gold. Right before World War I, many countries began printing more paper money than they had gold. As a result, this caused a devaluing of their money. At one point, it got so bad in Germany that at one point, people were burning wheelbarrows of paper money during the winter in order to stay warm. After World War I, many of the countries came back together to pick up the pieces of their currencies. They all agreed that the gold standard where their currencies would all be backed by gold. For example, one dollar would equal one half ounce of gold. That's just an example. Again, this advantage was desirable because now it meant that people no longer had to carry their gold around with them. However, the problem was if there was a net transfer of currency from one country to another, then the gold would also have to follow. You can already imagine that that was not the case in that did not happen. Also, all countries had to be on the same page and agree not to print money just because. As in the case of all of the other monetary systems, eventually countries began to abandon the gold standard during the Second World War as they began to print a lot of money to fund their military projects. As they printed more money, the value of the gold to dollar ratio went down even more. After World War II, countries came together to determine a monetary trading system that would work. They wanted something that would allow them to trade and keep currency exchange rates fixed. Also, they wanted to keep all countries in this agreement from printing more money when they needed it. They all agreed that the gold standard was too rigid and they needed something that would allow them to keep a leash over on the overprinting of money while still allowing flexibility. In 1944, 44 countries came together in the Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, to come up with a monetary system that would be advantageous to all countries that decided to participate in foreign trade. Because the U.S. held two thirds of all the world's gold at that time, the U.S. dollar was then chosen to become the world reserve currency, which meant that each other country would then peg their money to the U.S. dollar and the U.S. dollar would then be pegged to gold. Now, that we're not on that same system anymore. However, the U.S. dollar is still utilized as the world's reserve currency. As a result, in the actual Forex market, you will notice that the U.S. dollar has the highest amount of volume when it comes to trades because all countries tend to deal, well, not all countries, most countries tend to deal with the U.S. dollar when it comes to trading. And now you know why. Out of this meeting came two types of institutions, the IMF and the World Bank. The IMF's job was to lend money to countries who needed help in order to keep them from printing more money, which would cause the other country's money to become more devalued. The World Bank's job was to lend money to the new developing countries that wanted to expand and build up their infrastructure. This was also an effort to keep them from just creating money. The Bretton Woods system severely constrained the U.S. economy as they were constantly lending out more U.S. dollars while their gold reserves were continuing to dwindle due to most countries requesting gold in exchange for their currency. In 1971, Richard Nixon announced that they would no longer honor the gold exchange and announced that he would be taking the U.S. dollar off of the gold standard. What a big shock to the world! Nowadays, many countries' currencies are not backed by anything of value anymore. Instead, currencies' values are now determined by the floating exchange rate. Floating exchange rate regimes are not influenced by the government, but instead through the forces of supply and demand in the foreign exchange market, also called the Forex market or FX. Because a currency's value in a floating exchange rate regime are determined by supply and demand, their value can change and change freely and are determined by the foreign exchange market. 
some countries included in this managed flooding exchange.